For me, autumn is when I really get into reading and often catch up on my TBR. Rainy days mean I need no excuses to spend all my time indoors. It's Gilmore Girl season, so I get some of Rory's reading motivation. And as the day gets shorter, I somehow get more energy and productivity. So I thought it was the perfect time for another TBR video. I love making TBRs and lists in general, even though I don't always stick to them. And so I'll go through the books I would like to read this autumn. I will talk about some cozy, some spooky, some dark academia books, and some others that just seem fit for fall. As usual, I will make my TBR spread in my reading journal, but I've also recently started to make them as printables because then I can stick them up on my wall and get some accountability. So I made a TBR list for you to fill out as well if you would like to, and you can find a link to the free printable in the description box below. Do also let me know in the comments which books you plan to read this fall, if you prefer cozy, spooky, or mystery, or romance, or whichever genre Autumn screams for you. So let's get started with some cozy books. First up is My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologies by Frederick Backman. I've been thinking of my next Frederick Backman ever since I finished A Man Called Uva, which I absolutely loved, and I asked you all what book I should read of his next, and one of you suggested that I read my grandmother sends her regards and apology. And a day later, I walk into this tiny bookstore in Skopje, and right there on an even smaller English shelf is sitting this exact book, so I just knew I had to get it. I'll read you the blurb. To most people, seven-year-old Elsa's granny is eccentric, if not crazy. To Elsa, she's a superhero, one with a superpower like no other, storytelling. When granny leaves Elsa a mysterious series of letters apologizing to those she has wronged, her stories come to life in ways Elsa could never have imagined, sending her on a, on a breathtaking adventure of her own. Adventure, storytelling, an eccentric grandma protagonist, I think this will be exactly what I'm looking for for a cozy um, fall read. Another cozy book on my TBR is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. I was really excited about The Reading List when I first bought it months ago, but I somehow never got around to reading it. Um, but I was going through my shelves for this video and I realized that a book about books is definitely the type of book I'm looking for at the moment. Um, and from what I know, the premise is that the main character finds a reading list in a library book and then her going on this book club journey with a stranger. And I feel like it's going to be a really wholesome read with lovable characters, so it's definitely going on the list. Finally, on the cozy list, I have Cold Enough for Snow. Uh, the summary reads, a mother and daughter travel from abroad to meet in Tokyo. They walk along the canals through the autumn evenings, escape the typhoon rains, share meals in small cafes and restaurants, and visit galleries to see some of the city's most radical modern art. All the while they talk about the weather, horoscopes, clothes, and objects, about family, distance, and memory but uncertainties abound. Who is really speaking here? Is it only the daughter? And what is the real reason behind this elliptical, perhaps even spectral journey? At once a careful reckoning and an elegy, cold enough for snow questions whether any of us speak a common language, which dimensions can contain love, and what claim we have to truly know another's inner world. While I'm not sure if this will be an actual cozy book, there is something about the whole mother-daughter moments, autumn in Tokyo, small cafes that just make this seem a perfect read for fall. There's also an element of mystery and reflection, so this one is definitely going on my list too. Let's move on to some spooky books. 
Earlier this year, I started reading The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Marianne Enriquez when I realized that I would probably enjoy this more in fall or winter. From the first part I read, I definitely had very dark vibes. It's a collection of short stories that are somewhat horror, somewhat social political, and I think a little magical realism too. I don't know much more and I don't really want to. I'm really excited just to read it when it's dark out and I want to be captivated by something scary and dark. A different kind of spooky is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I haven't read many classics since I got back into reading, but I felt that Rebecca needed to be on this list. It's a gothic mystery. It's supposed to be very atmospheric, perfect for a rainy, stormy day, and some of you have recommended it to me, so um, I might finally get to it. I've been putting it off a little bit because of the last gothic mystery I read, which is Wakenhurst, and I didn't really enjoy that one, um, but that was a while ago, and in any case, uh, I am ready to give the genre another try. Then I have a few fantasy books as well that I want to put on this list. Um, first up is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft, which is a young adult fantasy which sounds great for fall. The blurb reads, When Margaret Welty spots the legendary Hala, the last living mythical creature, she knows the half-moon hunt will soon follow. Whoever is able to kill the Hala will earn fame and riches and unlock an ancient magical secret. If Margaret wins the hunt, it may finally bring her mother home. While Margaret is the best sharpshooter in town, um, only teams of two can register and she needs an alchemist. Western Winters isn't an alchemist, yet. Fired from every apprenticeship he's landed, his last chance hinges on Master Welty taking him in. But when Wes arrives at Welty Manor, he finds only Margaret in her bloodhound trouble. Margaret begrudgingly allows him to stay, but on one condition, he must join the hunt with her. Although they make an unlikely team, Wes is in awe of the girl who has endured alone on the outskirts of a town that doesn't want her in this creaking house of ghosts and sorrow. And even though Wes disrupts every aspect of her life, Margaret is drawn to him. He too knows what it's like to be an outsider. As the hunt looms closer and tensions rise, Margaret and Wes uncover dark magic that could be the key to winning the hunt, if they survive that long. This book sounds really amazing and I really hope I can find a copy of it. Next, I also have a fantasy series that I've been meaning to read forever and that's His Dark Materials. I never read it as a child, um, but I've heard only good things about it so I really want to read it and it definitely seems like a fall or winter type of mood. Autumn is also definitely the time for dark academia. To be honest, I have not read much in this genre. I think the only books are Ace of Spades and If They Were Villains. I both love these books, uh, especially Ace of Spades, and so I thought the obvious first choice was The Secret History, which seems to be an absolute must read in this genre. I've not read uh, any of the author's books, but I'm excited for it. I've also had The Inheritance Games on my list for a while, so that's a series that's going on there too. And then finally, I have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I think this book is a little less known, so I'll read the blurb for this one. Scarlett Clark is an exceptional English professor, but she's even better at getting away with murder. Every year, she searches for the worst man at Gorman University and plots his well-deserved demise. Thanks to her meticulous planning, she's avoided drawing attention to herself. But as she's preparing for her biggest kill yet, the school starts probing into the growing body count on campus. Determined to keep her enemies close, Scarlet insinuates herself into the investigation and charms the woman in charge, Dr. Mina Pierce. Everything's going according to her master plan until she loses control with her latest victim, putting her secret life at risk of exposure. Let me know if you are an avid Dark Academia reader and I've missed some obvious books um, that should be on this list. Please let me know, I'm very keen to delve into this genre a bit more deeply. The final two books on my TBR 
I first thought to be a bit random, but I think the overall theme is melancholy and sadness, <laughs> which is my why I might want to spread them out just a little bit. And the first one is Time as a Mother by Ocean Vuong. I remember the author's last poetry collection and novel being very emotional, so that is what I'm also expecting from this one. And finally, this autumn may finally be the time that I read A Little Life. It's definitely a book I know I need to be in the right headspace for, but I think one of these months will be that time. We will see. Um, so those are the books I plan to read in autumn. I would love to hear from you in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you do, and have a nice day.